One of my first memories of beavers occurred when I was a teenager out fishing in Algonquin Park. I was alone. I pulled up by a lodge, and from inside the lodge I heard this mewing sound, like kittens. And then to my amazement emerged a couple of young beavers, and they began swimming around my boat. And that was my introduction into the world of the beaver. It's winter. It's a time of hardship for most of nature's wildlife. And for the beaver, there is a layer of safety beneath the ice. Wolves and coyotes can't reach it there. But beavers can't breathe underwater, so they have to come to the surface, gulp some air down, and then disappear. And they still have a dam to maintain. Beavers eat plants, particularly woody plants. And while they may have some positioned around the entrance to the lodge underwater, Fresh food is something that always draws them. And this means going out on land. A mother on land, they are vulnerable to one predator in particular. A wolf. Wolves, and to a lesser extent coyotes, are the main predators of beaver. And beavers are particularly vulnerable to predation when they come out on land, especially in winter, because they're very visible. Where you find beavers, you often find other wildlife a bald eagle. Beavers are what we call a keystone species. Now, a keystone species is a species that really interacts with a lot of other parts of its environment. So beavers are known for cutting down trees. And they get in trouble for doing it. They're also known for building dams and blocking rivers. And it's only recently that we've started to realize just how important the beaver is to the ecology of a region. Now this one is taking a risk. You can see trees that he's cut down. They tend to like softwood trees. So aspens are one of their favorites. And they can make short work of a tree. Their teeth never stop growing. So beavers have to chew to grind them down. This one's got a small sapling. Once you've got your food, you don't want to hang around very long. You're too vulnerable. Wolves may be absent from some parts of the range, but coyotes are almost everywhere. And a coyote can take a small beaver. A large one might present a problem. The goal is to drag 
the sapling back to the water. Eh, not easy. The beaver is nothing if not determined. Uh, almost made it. And now he'll drag it back to his lodge and he will stick the sapling in the mud so that when the ice freezes over, he can go out from the lodge and still feed on it. We tend to think of beavers as forest dwellers living in the boreal forest, but really they were found across North America. And one of the surprising findings is how important they were to the indigenous peoples living in the plains. When they were offered the opportunity to trap for beavers by the Europeans, they chose not to because they needed the beavers whose dams kept water running year-round in the rivers, which allowed forests to grow, and the forests provided shelter for the bison. So there was a real benefit to the plains people of having beavers living near them. So they didn't hunt them, and they didn't eat them. And that wouldn't change till the horse arrived. The other benefit they got from the beavers was those forests in the river valleys provided the material for the indigenous people to build their homes with. The people of the boreal forests had no such need for beavers and trapped them and ate them. Before the arrival of the Europeans, the continent was pretty much all the land of the beaver. Forty million beaver lived here. But the demand for their fur soon reduced their numbers, and they were almost extinct. Thanks to conservation efforts, the beaver has been restored to most of its range. It was the horse that changed all of this. Horses evolved in North America, but they became extinct at the end of the last ice age. Europeans brought the horses back to help them conquer the native peoples. Many horses escaped and became wild. And it wasn't long before the indigenous people adopted the horse. And this meant they were no longer limited to where they had to camp. They could follow the bison. The beaver was no longer a factor in the life of the indigenous peoples of the plains. It didn't matter whether they trapped them out. They could now trade them, and they did. And it was a trade that would go on until about the 1840s. And then the demand in Europe for beaver felt hats dropped off, and suddenly nobody was interested in trapping beavers anymore. But by then the damage had been done. Forty million beavers were reduced to a mere few million. And without the beavers there, the climate started to change. It became drier because the beavers no longer held back the water and kept it on the plains throughout the year. So beavers affect all sorts of wildlife. Moose come to their ponds to feed, even in the winter, especially an old pond that has grown over. Wolves hunt moose and beaver. tailed deer. But all of these animals were benefiting from the presence of the beaver, and that was gone. Spring. The spring melt. Absent all of those beavers, 
rivers became wilder. They flooded more. We had no idea how important the beaver was to controlling floods. At least not until recently. A beaver dam in a floodplain. The water is held back. It hasn't drained away. The beaver has provided habitat. Canada geese nest here. Hooded magansers feed here on their way north. Wood ducks come to nest. The beaver has provided an important habitat for a variety of animals. And in the lodge, the beaver is caring for a new family of kits. These youngsters will soon make their appearance. And one of the things that surprised me was the social life that beavers have. If a beaver has a lifespan, so too does its dam and its lodge. Dams break down. Water drains. Dams must be repaired. A beaver lodge becomes old and overgrown, no longer a suitable house for a family of beavers. But this is part of nature's process. The decay brings in opportunities for other wildlife. The drying meadows are a habitat for flowers and insects. You wouldn't think that bringing wolves back into a place would help beaver, but that's exactly what happened in Yellowstone. Elk, you see, like to graze by the river, and they also eat young aspen trees. And because they eat them, the forest along the edge of the river died off. But then wolves were brought back in, and wolves on elk and it didn't take the elk long to figure out that hanging by the rivers wasn't a good idea. So they moved away. And the aspen forest came back. And the beaver came back. And so did the fish. And so did the osprey. So by simply reintroducing wolves in the Yellowstone, they created this trophic cascade that benefited a number of species. Beavers often come across as being rather stoic, maybe even cranky critters. They spend a lot of time alone. But they are surprisingly social. Parents take good care of their offspring, and when they mature, Young beavers may choose to make their lodges quite close to their parents, sharing their same ring. But they can get a little cranky if some of the youngsters start to steal their food. What's mine is mine. Oddly enough, they don't seem to be too concerned about their neighbors. So when a redneck reed comes by to steal some plant material for its nest, nobody really seems to object, and the greed gets away with it. Let's see, this nest is looking good. What do you think, dear? Apparently, she approves. An old beaver pond becomes a meadow, and a meadow attracts a bull moose, along with several species of birds 
that feed on the many insects that live here. Moose are called twig eaters for good reason. The meadow is also cool, and on a hot summer's day, it's a refreshing stop. Beavers are most visible early in the morning and in the late afternoon. During the heat of the day, they often retire to their lodges. They are superbly adapted to their aquatic lifestyle. They use their hind feet to propel them through the water and they can hold their breath underwater for about 16 minutes. I've seen a beaver dive in a pond and then I never saw it again, even though I could see the entire width and breadth of the pond. Their eyes are located on the top of their head so that when they're swimming, they can see above them. Beaver are being restored through much of their range, and there's now a movement afoot to restore the bison to a large portion of its range. The restoration of these two species will greatly improve the biodiversity of the Great Plains. Ontario's Algonquin Provincial Park, because it was protected, was one of the areas that beavers were taken from to help restore them across North America. There was a rule, believe it or not, in Ontario that no beavers were allowed south of Highway 401. And this was possible to enforce back in the days when beaver numbers were down. When a beaver moves on, it leaves behind a lot of evidence of its presence. Beaver meadows are great places for wildlife. A colony of beavers can literally eat themselves out of house and home, and so they have to move on. An old beaver lodge is a great place to explore. You can see the canals that they built to help bring their food in. The pile of wood will eventually decay and the pond dries up and becomes a meadow. Coyotes come to the meadow. They might take a young beaver. The beaver's splashing tail alerts the rest of the colony and the beavers disappear. But other animals pay no attention. Well, it's not a beaver, but a metaphor will do, at least for a while. Black bears come to the meadow. They like to feed on the berries. In the spring, black bears and grizzly bears have been seen stomping on beaver lodges, chasing the prey out and then grabbing them. Only the largest predators are able to take an adult beaver. Grizzly bears, black bears, wolves, and coyotes. Beavers can be remarkably social. Food arrives, and it's not long before the young beavers 
join the adults. In this particular colony, there were seven beavers. And one of the things that surprised me was the amount of time they spent together grooming. Grooming is an important activity. They must keep their fur clean and oiled if it is to remain waterproof. They have a special claw on their back foot that acts like a comb. The average beaver pond is about 40 acres in size. That's the visible water. But the water underground can extend much further. And we've come to realize that beavers really hold back a lot of water in the environment. A beaver pond becomes very attractive to moose in the fall. Partly because there's lots of food available. Moose have a problem in the fall. They have to find each other to mate. But in the deep woods, well, it's kind of hard to see each other. So moose are very vocal. But a pond like this provides them plenty of space to be seen and to be heard. Occasionally, another large aquatic mammal visits the pond, the river otter. River otters have little interest in beavers, although there are reports of them eating the kits occasionally. Mostly river otters are after fish. And there are lots of fish. These minnows are backed up behind the dam. It's very difficult to underestimate the value of beaver to the natural world and to the health of our world. Beavers in the wild only live four to five years, although they can live up to 20 years in captivity. After they are about two years old, they've left the family lodge and moved out to find territory of their own. A mink. It's hunting the shoreline, but it's not after beaver. It's looking for frogs, insects, fish, and maybe, if it's lucky, muskrat. On average, in a year, they'll eat about two kilograms of food a day per beaver. Woody plants are consumed all year round, but in the spring and summer they'll eat fresh green plants, marsh plants, and plants growing along the bank. We have a love-hate relationship with the beaver. We sometimes welcome them, but they do do a lot of damage. And walking through the forest and seeing all those trees cut down, or the flooded lands that they created by their dams, sometimes humans take action to get rid of the beaver. They've been trapped, shot, and otherwise removed. But is this a wise decision? On a small scale, dealing with beavers sometimes makes sense. But you have to remember that beavers are mobile animals. If you get rid of one, 
Another one will soon show up. They are constantly moving around. And if they eat themselves out of house and home, well, they'll move on on their own accord. Just as an aside, a beaver lodge is not just home to beavers. Quite often, there's another resident that lives with them. So while the beaver is busily doing its thing, this other animal might very much be taking up residence in the beaver's lodge. Muskrats can build their own homes, and they look like miniature beaver lodges, but they're not made out of wood. They tend to be made out of plant material. Often mistaken for a baby beaver, they are just the right size for a mink. Beavers exist in a number of habitats. Remember, at one time there were 40 million beaver. And those 40 million beaver dammed up millions of acres of water and many millions more acres of underground water. We worry about flooding. We worry about drought. We worry about fires. And the beaver provides a solution to a lot of those problems. Welcoming the beaver back into our environment makes a lot of sense. Yes, they'll cut down those trees we just planted. But they do so much good. No matter where you find the beaver, whether it's in Algonquin Park, Point Pelee National Park, the Rocky Mountains, in your farmlands, they have an important role to play in helping us restore the environment. So when you see a beaver, welcome it. Enjoy it. It might just help save our planet.